My friends, today I want to talk about exercise 4. Exercise 4 is a very basic object. It is so basic that we can do it in three different ways within three minutes. Well, give or take some time over there. But so what I'm, I'm trying to do is because it's a basic object, uh, I want to take this opportunity to explain the difference between part design and part workbench. So we have uh, multiple workbenches in, in, in FreeCAD where we can have multiple specialized tools uh, to use in our advantage. And mostly I've been using part workbench in, in my um, practices. I, I like part design, uh, but I like part more. So actually in, in, in all of these uh, workbenches, part and part design they are used interchangeably to do the same thing, maybe just a little bit different way. Uh, I, my preference is on part so far, but part design has some flexibility that I use from time to time. So in this exercise, I will be modeling exercise for in both part and part design. Uh, even so, I will be using two methods in part, design, uh, part workbench uh, to to build this model. So let's get started with exercise four. I want to start with part design. In part design, I'll have to create a body as the first step. So there has to be a body to create, uh, to work on this part design workbench. So a part design workbench cannot work outside of a body and, and that you'll have to create it manually. Uh, let's go ahead and then do some calibration on the on the image on the technical drawing although it's so simple that we would not be needing that but since we've been doing it from the beginning uh, why break tradition right so there it's 60 I've got that I want to keep that on XZ plane on the side view so there and we are in part design so I want to draw and sketch on XZ plane the same plane that I have this technical drawing set up oh we missed actually one thing in the calibration we have not moved the image so let's bring up this AC I want to keep the object at the center so just a little bit uh, let me make this 0.5 and see if that will give me some precision there okay so we got that one sorted out let's go back to sketching and what I want to do in part design, I want to make a sketch that I can revolve around the z-axis to create this object. So it will be a one sketch job. So I draw the sketch. I want to make this half the diameter. So that is 20. This is 30. This is horizontal. And this is 30. We should have one more degrees of freedom and that is the length of this bar which should be half the 20. Right, so we've got a fully constrained sketch that we want to build an object out of here. So sketch, I want to say revol revolution. Okay, and I want to use the revolve button here and it already did that. So I'm doing that with vertical axis or we could say Z axis, either way, the same thing. And I want to revolve it 360 degree and I want to just leave it like that. All right, so that's our object, pretty simple. One sketch, one click job. Uh, we did that in part design. Uh, 
pretty pretty easy I want to do the same thing in part workbench so let's go ahead uh, make a new file I want to bring in this image I want to switch to part workbench right and process the image place that on the x3 plane and then oh, let's keep it an xy plane I want to do the calibration first right so this is 60 right and now I want to bring that to x3 plane okay uh, we want to update not do the half transparent thing that's why I want to keep that half transparent but we're almost there pretty close all right let me take that AC away so first thing, I want to do the same thing that I did in part workbench. So I can do a sketch on X3 plane and do the same thing. So sketching part is same. So it was the same sketch. We can rename that sketch base. And then I can use this revolve. So in part design it's, it was named revolution now it is revolved the same thing and I want to select the Z axis which is already there so whichever the axis was selected there will be one right next to it and or if I could if I wanted to see a different thing say I, I want to select the line instead of an axis so there I, I can select that and make that 360 angle right there hit OK there comes our revolve and that is our final object pretty simple so the same thing so that way part and part design wasn't much different here but in part we didn't have to create that body part can work standalone without any you know outside of body but part design is kind of sensitive about having a body it cannot work outside of a body I can do the same thing in uh, part design in part workbench using the primitives so what I mean by that is there are some primitives here in part workbench so I can use two cylinders first one so remember that the first cylinder was diameter 20 the second cylinder is diameter 40 both are 30 millimeter high so in this one first one I want to make the radius 10 which means diameter 20 the second one I want to make radius 20 which means diameter 40 and then I want to take this one up by 30 but I'll have to key in the height too so that's 30 and this is 32 now I want to take this larger cylinder in the Z direction by 30 so there that's that's our object actually basically that's what we built in previous two methods so in part we can use primitives in our advantage now that we we use two parts we can make them one parter and say final object so it was pretty basic, exercise four, very basic. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.